Namaste and hello everyone. I am Dr. Rupak Bhandari, Assistant Professor, Department of General Practice and Emergency Medicine, BBKHS Taran. And uh, today we will be discussing on principles of management of acute poisoning. So to start with, so what is a poison? So any substance that can cause severe damage or death if ingested, breathed in or injected or absorbed from the body through the skin. So it is poison. So let's take an overview of poison. Uh, the WHO reports from 2018 shows that 30 million people are affected with poison worldwide and around uh, 250,000 to 500,000 mortality is there per year uh, due to poisoning and uh, there are around 750,000 chronic illnesses related to poison and 100,000 are affected by birth defect and mutation and neurodegenerative disorders due to poisoning. So uh, coming to the scenario in Nepal, uh, the most common poisoning in Nepalese context is organophosphate poisoning and the majority of intentional poisoning occur in the female housewives and students of the younger age group. So the common age group is between 15 to 24 years. So as you can see that uh, the impulsive act is uh, more common in this age group. Now coming to the clinical features uh, of the poisoning. The poisoning has a dynamic presentation as the patient may present at the varying points of time course of poisoning. So uh, it can affect every organ of the body, mostly related to the cardiovascular uh, spectrum of poisoning. Uh, it may range from arrhythmia to heart blocks. Uh, in, in respiratory, uh, there may be wheezes or bronchorrhea or it may lead to respiratory failure. In the neurological symptoms ranges from tremor and fasciculations uh, to uh, seizure and coma. Uh, the metabolic abnormalities may range from acidosis to alkalosis and the uh, renal or hepatic uh, derangements can be found according to the poison. The poisons which can uh, cause the cardiovascular effects are anticholinergics, amphetamine, cocaine, theophylline, uh, beta blockers, digoxin. And uh, those poisons which can cause respiratory illness are opioids, organophosphates, snake bite, alcohol, and botulism. And uh, uh, the poison which can cause neurological symptoms are alcohol intoxication or withdrawal, the antipsychotic agents, the cannabis poisoning, and benzodiazepines and cocaine. Now let's uh, come to the topic proper, uh, the approach to the management of acute poisoning, especially in emergency setting. So uh, in stepwise uh, approach, the first and foremost step is the emergency stabilization of the patient. In the stepwise uh, management of acute poisoning, especially in emergency setting, we start with emergency stabilization of the patient. The emergency stabilization refers to resuscitation of the patient. So uh, when it comes to resuscitation, it's airway, breathing and circulation. So coming to airway. So in airway intervention, uh, we should clear the oropharyngeal secretions of the patient uh, to clear the airway. Uh, we should keep the patient in the sniffing position using head tilt, chin lift and jaw thrust maneuver as shown in the figure there. And uh, uh, if the patient is prone to uh, vomit recurrently, we should place the patient in head down left lateral position. So always evaluate for the gag or cough reflex in the patient. If there is absence of gag, gag reflex, then it's time to intubate the patient to secure the airway. Now coming to the breathing. So determine if the respirations are adequate or not. There are certain uh, drugs or poison which can cause severe respiratory depression leading to apnea. Uh, so give supplemental oxygen, check for oxygen saturation and arterial blood gas analysis and assist with the bag and mask ventilation if required. So auscultate the lung fields for bronchospasm. If there is bronchospasm, salbutamol nebulization may help. If there is bronchorrhea, then give atropine. If there is strider, uh, then uh, you should intubate the patient immediately. Now coming to circulation. So first and foremost, IV access. So evaluate the hemodynamic status of the patient. Obtain the blood samples for workup and 
continuous ECG monitoring should be done. There are certain poisons which can cause cardiac arrhythmia and heart blocks. Assess for arrhythmias and treat them accordingly. So if the patient is hypotensive due to poison, uh, then we should challenge with a uh, crystalloid, uh, normal saline preferably. Uh, 20 milli ml per kg bolus should be given and uh, reassessment and repeat bolus as required. So if the patient is still hypotensive, then uh, we can add vasopressors to it. So for uh, hypertension secondary to poisoning, uh, the drugs like nitroprusside, beta blockers and nitroglycerin can help. Now coming to disability, uh, we should look for the focal neurological deficit. So AVPU scale or GCS scale. In AVPU, the patient, if the we should check if the patient is alert, response to verbal command, response to pain stimuli, or unresponsive. And uh, the second thing we should look for the pupillary reaction. If the uh, pupils are constricted, dilated, or anisocoric. So the constricted pupil are due to the poisons like uh, morphine, heroin, fentanyl. Uh, the dilated pupils are due to the poisons like amphetamine, methamphetamine, cocaine, or hallucinogens. Mm, and the red eyes is seen in the marijuana poisoning uh, or uh, cocaine or benzodiazepines. So now exposure with environmental control. So we should remove all the clothings and change it with a new set of dry cloths and examine the patient for any trauma and uh, uh, we should not forget that the patient may land up into hypothermia so uh, we should prevent hypothermia uh, while doing the exposure now coming to the second step in the emergency management it is the supportive therapy now, in the supportive measures we should monitor the vital signs of the patient uh, we should provide the maintenance iv fluid uh, to maintain the uh, blood circulation and uh, Intensive nursing care should be done with nasogastric tube, Foley's catheter, and eye care. And monitor the input and output, and if they are balancing or not. And uh, temperature charting should be done and prevent hypo or hyperthermia. And uh, for the control of seizures and agitation, benzodiazepines or barbiturates may be given. And the third step uh, in the management is clinical evaluation. So in the clin clinical evaluation, there is uh, detailed history taking of the patient, physical examination, as well as toxicological screening should be done. So in the history taking, uh, we should note the uh, which poison the patient has ingested and the amount the uh, poison taken and the time and location of exposure and the route of exposure, whether it is uh, oral route, whether it is injectable route or whether it is transdermal route or inhalational route. And we should also uh, take history about intake of other substances apart from that specific poison. And the circumstances of exposure and the current medications and past medications the uh, patient has been taking. And uh, the pre-hospital treatment uh, before coming to uh, the facility. So now coming to the physical examination, we should check the clothing for any objects or substances. Uh, we should assess the general appearance of the patient if the patient is agitated, confused or drowsy and uh, uh, we should examine the skin for any bruising, cyanosis or flushing of the skin and we should examine the eyes for pupil size, reactivity and lacrimation. So we should look for the oropharynx for uh, any increased salivation or excessive dryness because this gives hint towards the possible poison the patient has ingested. Different poison has different systemic effects, starting with the cardiovascular effects. It may range from tachycardia to bradycardia, hypotension to hypertension. There may be conduct, conduction defects and arrhythmias. In uh, respiratory, the, there may be wheezing, bronchorrhea, or even ventilatory failure. In neurological, the patient may be agitated, the patient may be delirious, or the patient might have seizures or coma. In extremities, we can find the fasciculations or tremors, and in metabolic abnormalities, uh, we find the hyper or hyperglycemia, electrolyte imbalance, uh, acidosis, and alkalosis. Now, uh, toxidromes. What is a toxidrome? So it is a combination of signs and symptoms, which when taken collectively, it characterized a suspected toxicant. So let's see some of the toxidromes of uh, specific poisons. So if uh, the patient has bradypnea, bradycardia, hypotension, 
hypothermia and meiosis, it is a toxidrome for opioid poisoning. So, if the patient has diarrhea, diaphoresis, urination, meiosis, muscle fasciculation, bradycardia, bronchorrhea, emesis, lacrimation, and salivation, so it is a specific toxidrome for organophosphate poisoning. So, if the patient has tachycardia, hyperthermia, dry skin, mydriasis, uh, decreased bowel sound, urinary retention, delirium or agitation, so it is a toxidrome for anticholinergics. So, if the patient has hypertension, tachycardia, mydriasis and agitation, it is the toxidrome for amphetamine or cocaine poisoning. Now, coming to lab tests, uh, there are a panel of uh, tests which should be done in case of poisoning. So, electrolytes uh, such as uh, sodium, potassium should be checked, glucose screening should be done, urea creatinine and LFTs, uh, PTINR uh, should be checked, uh, ECG should be done because uh, many poisons have cardiac effects with uh, different arrhythmia to blocks and ABG should be obtained and urinalysis and chest x-ray should be done in uh, specific uh, poisoning and uh, urine pregnancy test uh, for any female patient of reproductive age group. So specific lab testing for definitive drug screen should be done if the ingested poison is certain drug uh, such as acetaminophen or salicylates or urine drug screening or alcohol screening. Now ECG, uh, prolonged QRS is seen in case of poisoning with tricyclic antidepressants or calcium channel blockers. So heart blocks or sinus bradycardia is seen in the uh, poisons like beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, digoxin or organophosphate poisoning. And ventricular tachycardia is seen in the poisons like cocaine, amphetamine, digoxin or tricyclic antidepressants. Now coming to the fourth step of the management of acute poisoning, it is limiting the absorption of the poison. So uh, limiting the absorption of poison and decontamination should be done. Uh, the decontamination, uh, it is divided into two parts, external decontamination as well as internal decontamination. For external decontamination, the cloths of the patient are removed and uh, skin and eyes are washed th thoroughly and uh, it, is, it should be changed with a dry clean cloth. And for internal decontamination, uh, we should do the gastric lavage. So it is gastric lavage is the method of evacuating the stomach contents by inserting a nasogastric tube, administration of the normal saline, and then subsequent aspiration of the fluid, uh, bringing with it the ingested poison. But we should be cautious during gastric lavage. It should not be considered unless the patient has ingested a potentially life-threatening amount of poison or the patient presents within one hour of ingestion of poison or the patient is either fully awake or intubated. Uh, so that even if the patient vomits, the so patient uh, does not aspirate the uh, content. So uh, the contraindications to gastric lavage is unprotected airway, hydrocarbon or corrosive poisoning or esophageal pathology. So complications are the common complication is aspiration leading to pneumonia and hypoxia, perforation of the throat or esophagus, and laryngospasm and epistaxis. So since uh, gastric lavage has a lot of complications, so we do not routinely do gastric lavage in our setting. Uh, instead, uh, we modify it as gastric aspiration uh, where uh, we uh, administer around 50 to 100 ml of normal saline and uh, uh, pull out the fluid uh, and repeat the procedure until the fluid is clear. So there are paper uh, suggesting that the gastric lavage should not be employed routinely. So in uh, different studies, uh, they found no significant difference in outcome in the patient who are undergoing gastric lavage and who do not undergo gastric lavage. So the other method of decontamination are adsorption with activated charcoal, which is also not routinely recommended these days because of increased risk of aspiration and no uh, significant benefit. So uh, another um, mode is cathartics in which there is accelerated expulsion of poison uh, from GI tract causing diarrhea. So we, this is also no longer recommended these days. So now the next step is enhanced elimination of the poison. So for whom enhanced elimination of the poison? So if there is severe intoxication with a deteriorating condition despite the maximal supportive care, 
uh, in which the unusual the usual route of elimination is impaired uh, in which a known lethal dose or the lethal blood level of the poison is seen in those cases we advise for enhanced elimination of the poison so there are different techniques for enhanced elimination so multiple dose activated charcoal is given in poisoning such as carbamazepine dapsone or phenobarbital poisoning uh, urinary alkalization uh, should be done in cases of poisoning like phenobarbital or salicylate hemodialysis is advised for the poisoning like ethylene glycol lithium or uh, methanol poisoning and charcoal or hemo perfusion is advised in poisoning like theophylline so in the sixth step of acute management of poisoning administration of antidote so what is antidote so antidote is a substance which neutralizes the effect of the poison via different mechanisms so let's see the different mechanism with which the antidote works the first mechanism is inert complex formation it uh, uh, combines with uh, the poison and uh, makes it inert complex so that it cannot work further so uh, the second mechanism is accelerated de detoxification the third step is reduction in conversion to more toxic compound so the fourth step is competitive inhibition at the receptor site and the fifth step is bypassing the effects of the poison uh, so of, uh, it is important to note here that around 80% of all poisons do not have a specific antidote and only around 20% of the poisons do have a specific antidotes. So uh, initial resuscitation and supportive care play uh, a vital role in patient care in acute setting rather than antidotes. So we can see the different specific antidotes of different toxins. For paracetamol poisoning, n acetylcysteine is an antidote. For organophosphates, it's atropine and praliroxin. For warfarin, it's vitamin K. For heparin, it's protamine sulfate. For iron, uh, the antidote is diperoxamine. For opioids, it's naloxone. For benzodiazepines, it's flumazenil. And for methanol, it's ethanol. Now coming to the last and final step, the appropriate disposition of the patient. So after uh, all acute management, the patient should be disposed of accordingly. So for appropriate uh, disposition of the patient, uh, we should decide whether a short period of uh, observation uh, is adequate or the patient needs admission uh, relating to the uh, lethality of the poison. And the psychiatric evaluation must be done uh, in every case of poison, uh, poisoning which is taken uh, for suicidal intent and uh, we should rule out the child abuse and neglect if the child has presented with poisoning in emergency and uh, family counseling and education must be given before discharge of the patient so now coming to the criteria for icu admission uh, there are different criteria uh, which needs icu admission the first one is cns depression when the patient has altered sensorium with gcs score of less than or equal to seven uh, when the patient is agitated, re requiring chemical or physical restraint, when there is respiratory depression, hypoxia or respiratory failure, when there is seizure which is recurrent, when there is non-sinus rhythm or uh, AV blocks, uh, when there is significant acid-based disturbances, especially the pH of less than 7.2, when there is a need for invasive uh, hemodynamic monitoring, or when there is a need for emergency hemodialysis, hemoperfusion or hemofiltration, or when there is ischemic chest pain from the toxins, especially the cocaine and carbon monoxide poisoning. So in these cases, uh, the patient needs to be admitted in ICU. So to summarize, so a wide range of clinical manifestations of toxicity may be observed and the accurate risk assessment predicts the likely clinical course and informs planning for investigation, management and disposition. So the mainstay of treatment is timely resuscitation with institution of an appropriate level of supportive care. And the role of GI decontamination is controversial. And the specific antidotes and techniques of enhanced elimination are rarely indicated, but timely use may be life-saving. And the self-poisoning is a manifestation of an underlying psychiatric illness, drug or alcohol use disorders, or a social disorder. So it must be looked upon in case of self-poisoning. So thank you so much. This is the Poison Center for Nepal. Uh, we can call it anytime uh, for any queries related to poisoning. Thank you so much for active listening.